Have you tried to create automation against GitHub Actions, only to find that when the job is waiting on an environment protection rule to complete, that you can't tell what's happening? Then this is the video for you. Come with me as we look at the new waiting state in GitHub Actions. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and admittedly, today's video is a little more on the fringes of GitHub Actions, but it's still good to know, especially if you're building automation around GitHub workflows and jobs. Now, as you know, a GitHub Actions workflow is made up of one or more jobs. Every job in GitHub Actions is associated with a check run. So when a workflow job transitions from one state to another, it triggers a webhook with information about the job and the transition. If you are creating any sort of automation around actions, say for example, trying to build a near real-time dashboard, then you could use the information from the webhook to build out your project, such as your dashboard. Now one area that was a little murky was understanding the status of a job when it is waiting for an environment protection rule to complete. Initially, there were only three states for jobs, queued, in progress, or completed. When a job was waiting on an environment protection rule, the job would show in progress, even though it wasn't actually doing anything. GitHub has added a new state for the job to account for this. It's called waiting. This will provide better insight into the progress of a job when using environment protection rules. Let's see this in action. So we want to look at this new waiting state that's available as a job status. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need a repository. So let's click new and let's go create a repository and we'll call this actions and APIs and I'll make it public and I'll give it a readme file and I'll also give it a git ignore file because that's a good practice to give the repository git ignore file and I will say create repository so this is going to create a repository for us to work with now when github actions is running a workflow and a job changes its status from queue to in progress it runs a or it triggers a webhook that runs. We want to see the payload information that's in that webhook. And we can do that by creating our own webhook that triggers off the same events. So if we go to settings and we go to webhooks and I click add a webhook, then I need to specify where is the payload supposed to go. Well, to actually see the payload where it is supposed to go doesn't have to actually exist. So I can just say HTTPS colon whack whack. I am not a real place. And rather than triggering on the push event, I want to select the event I'm going to trigger on. And you can see we have all these different events that webhooks can trigger on. I'm going to uncheck push and I'm going to check workflow jobs because this is the event that's going to run when the job changes its status. And I'm going to click Add Webhook. Now the nice thing about doing it this way is I can go into the webhook, so I can click here, go into the webhook, and I can go to Recent Deliveries, and it will show me all of the different times that this webhook has been invoked, and I can see the payload related to those invo invocations. In this case, you'll notice that I'm getting an error failed to connect to host because, well, the host doesn't exist. So now that we have a webhook in place so that we can see the payload that's going to be generated for each of those events, let's go create a workflow file and generate some. So I'm going to open this in a new tab. And we're going to go create a simple workflow. This is a super basic workflow that's just going to write a couple of things out to the command line. I want it to only trigger when 
I manually run it. And so then I will start my commit. We'll call this initial version and I will commit this file. To run it, I go to the Actions tab, I select the file that I created, and I say Run Workflow, and I run this workflow. And we'll see that the workflow starts up. Now if I go back to my webhook and I do a quick refresh, we can see that a workflow job queued event happened. If I do another refresh, we can see it's already finished, right? So the progression was the workflow was queued, the workflow was in progress, the job was in progress, sorry, the job was queued, the job was in progress, and the job completed. And if I want to see the actual payload for each of these events, I can just click the three ellipses, and it, here's the actual JSON payload, which has information such as the status of the job. If I look at the in progress, it even has the steps that are going to run as part of that job. But it has the status in progress. And if I look at the completed, it has status completed. But we want to see that fourth status, that waiting status. And that occurs when an environment protection rule has not resolved. So the first step is we need to create an environment with an environment protection rule. So we'll click new environment. We'll call this dev. And in that environment, I'm going to require a reviewer. And we'll say Mickey-Octodemo has to approve this. And I'm going to save that protection rule. So now you can see if we go back to the environments tab, we have one environment called dev that has a protection rule, meaning that this job is not going to run, any job targeting this environment will not run until Mickey Octodemo approves it. So let's go modify our code to make use of this environment. So we'll go back to our workflow file, we'll go into edit, and I'm going to come down under the runs on, and I'm going to add an environment keyword. And then for, under that environment keyword, I'm going to specify the environment name, in this case, dev. So this job is now targeting that environment, which means it's going to have to be approved before the job can run. So let's say added dev environment and commit our change. And then we'll go back to our actions tab, select our workflow and run our workflow. And now if we go back to our webhook, we go into the webhook and we go to recent deliveries, then you can see that the job, here's the queued event, but now there's the waiting event. We're waiting for the environment protection rules to evaluate and be done before we can continue on. And we can see if we go into the waiting payload, we have a status of waiting. And then we have this deployment section that shows the environment we're, we're targeting as well as other deployment information. So if we go back to our workflow, and I review this deployment and I approve it. And then we go back to our API, or sorry, not our API, but go back to our webhook. And you can see that there's where we initially queued it, and here's where we went to a waiting state. Because I approved it and the job's going to continue to run, the job queues up again so it can find a runner. Then the job goes in progress. And do a refresh. And then the job is completed. Now, 
this waiting state is really nice because before this, we only had queued, in progress, and completed. And when a job was waiting for environment protection rules to finish, it didn't say that, it just showed in progress. So imagine now having a dashboard where anytime um, one of these events triggers, we throw the, we trigger a webhook, which then takes that information, throws it in a database, and we can show a near real, real time dashboard of the status of our GitHub action workflows. Now, this information, as we've seen, we've been triggering a webhook to get this information. You can also query the REST APIs to get this information as well. So there you go. And I'm anxious to see if anybody goes out and tries to actually build a real-time dashboard making use of all four of these states. If you do, let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this video on webhook enhancements for GitHub Actions environment protection rules. If so, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.